Rates are high and home prices are still high. So lenders are coming up with all types of affordability hacks, trying to get your payment lower. So let's talk about some of these common strategies that lenders use when rates are high to get you a payment you can afford. But what you have to think about, is it worth it? And will this work for me? We're gonna talk about rate buy downs, arms and refinancing. So let's start with rate buy downs. You pay points in order to get your rate down to an amount, hopefully that's more affordable than just using the current fixed rate. So when you're doing a rate buy down, you are paying to get a lower rate. And so the money that you are paying, you wanna make sure at what point are you, is it going to be worth it for you? You have to know your break even point. Okay, I did a whole video on points, but I'm gonna kind of explain it just briefly here with the rate buy down. So you a point is 1% of your mortgage or of your loan amount. So let's assume that you have a $100,000 loan amount. One point would be 1%, which is $1,000 but you're not going to save 1% on your mortgage. So it's not gonna go from 7% to 6%. It may go down one eighth of a percent or it may go down a quarter of a percent. So if interest rates are 7% and you pay a point, and this is going to vary by lender, then your rate may go down to 6.75, for example, right? So you're paying to get your rate lower but at what point are you really saving? Because I'll give you a quick example. Let's say on that $100,000 house that you're going to buy a point, right? And let's say it's 5%. Your rate is 5%, you buy a point, it goes down to 4.75%. So for example, say that your mortgage was going to be $536 at the 5%, but once you pay down you know, did the rate buy down to 4.75, your mortgage is going to be $521. You are saving $15 a month. So at what point does that $15 equal the $1,000 that you already paid up front? Because you're paying this money up front to save in the long run. So in the long run, you will save, but how long do you have to live in that house, pay that mortgage until you actually are saving? So we're going to take that $15 and we are going to um, divide, or the $1,000 divided by um, 15. So that would be 66 months. You're saving $15 a month. You're dividing that by the $1,000. That would be 66 months. So in order to break even on the $1,000 that you're paying now, it would take you 5.5 years. So to do this rate buy down, it would only make sense if you plan on definitely living the house longer than five and a half years or 5.5 years, right? If the seller is paying some of your closing costs, then that money isn't necessarily coming out of your pocket and they're paying for that rate buy down. But you just wanna make sure that you understand fully your break even point because of course that money could be going to other places. If they're paying for the rate buy down, then you're paying your closing costs. So you just wanna look at everything um, when it comes to a rate buy down. But the most important thing I want you to look at is number one, your break even point. How long do you have to live in that house in order for you to be making money, right? So in the long run, you will probably make money on the rate buy down, but it might take, you know, depending on how much you buy down that rate, is it going to take you 10 years? Is it gonna take you seven years, three years? You really wanna look at that and make sure that you're going to be in that home that amount of time. Because if you do a rate buy down and then you only live in the house for three years or four years, you didn't save anything at all. So you really wanna be very um, conscious of, are you paying your own money for the rate buy down? Is it coming from you know the seller helping you with the closing costs or the builder helping you with the closing costs? Who is paying for the rate buy down? How much are you buying down your rate? You wanna think of all of that and then also think of what they call opportunity costs. So say that you're going to pay $7,000 to buy down your rate and it may take you, you know, some years, three years, four years, five years to make that money up. 
um, at your break even point, what else could you have been doing with that $5,000? So you just want to talk about, or $7,000, what are you going to, um, you have to make sure you think all of those things through before you do the rate buy down. So that's number one. Let's go into ARM. So an ARM is another way, it's, called, it's short for an adjustable rate mortgage. So that rate is going to change. So generally speaking, it's a lower rate at the very beginning. You can get a one year, three year, seven year, 10 year. You can get you know a certain amount of fixed rate years, one year, three year, five year, seven years, 10 years are common. And then after that, that rate adjusts. You need to make sure you know what that rate is going to adjust to because you want to make sure not only that you can afford the rate that you are doing the arm at, so you're affording that. So say you're you're able to lock in an arm at 5%, but in two years or three years, it's going up to 7%. Can you afford that? If it was to adjust up, and most of the time it's going to just adjust up, if it adjusts up, can you afford that amount? Now it could adjust down, but you wanna just make sure that you're fully aware that you can afford it at the higher level. That's the most important. Can you afford it if it adjusts up, okay? So be very mindful of that. I did a video on an arm because my first home, I did do an arm, a seven year arm. You also wanna make sure that you are going to be able to sell or refinance if you need to, to get out of that arm. So all of those things are very important and they need to be thought through. Do not just think about affordability now, think about affordability in the future. Not because sometimes the only way you can afford that house is if the rate is low and that's the problem you may get in. So if you only can afford the house with the arm, when the rate adjusts, you no longer can afford the house. But a lot of times lenders will tell you that, oh, you'll just be able to refinance, you'll get it back down. But what happens, and that's my next point, what happens if you can't refinance? And there are going to be times, especially if you don't have any equity or you have neg negative equity in the house, where it becomes more difficult to refinance. Or if you don't have a job, or if your credit is not as strong as it was when you first purchased, all of those factors may come in and you may not have the ability to refinance. A refinance is you getting a new loan to pay off your current loan. So if somebody is going to, another lender is gonna come and pay off your first loan, that house is collateral for the loan. But what if your house, because we're in a volatile um, environment, your house may go down in value. Over the long term, it will rebound, but say in the next year, year and a half, your house is not worth what you paid for it now. And then you're thinking, okay, my rate is about to adjust and maybe I did a three-year arm, but I don't have any equity or I have negative equity. Like I bought my house for 100,000, now my house is worth 90,000. It may be difficult for you to find a company, a lender that wants to refinance that loan because they know the collateral, right? Your house is not worth what they're lending you. Like you don't have enough money to pay off um, the first loan and, and them being in a positive position. So you wanna be mindful when you're thinking about all of these different ways that lenders are trying to get you to afford the house. You know, adjustable rate mortgages. Oh, you can always refinance, um, rate buy downs. You want to make sure you do the math on all of these things that they're offering you and that you fully understand. You fully understand what you're getting into and what happens when it adjusts. When do you start saving money on the rate buy down? All of those things you wanna think about, I'm putting calculators in the description of this video so you're very clear and you can do the math to see what makes the most sense for you. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Please like and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week.